Hello friends. Now I will be talking to you about Cone syndrome, which is also known as primary hyperaldosteronism. As far as hyperaldosteronism is concerned, it is of two types. As primary and secondary. As far as causes of primary is concerned, is usually either unilateral adenoma or bilateral adrenal hyperplasia. Okay. And as far as secondary is concerned, it occurs in condition like congestive heart failure, nephrotic syndrome, and cirrhosis of liver. Okay. Now let us see what is the pathophysiology of <clears throat> primary and secondary. In the primary, <clears throat> in the primary, as you know, the adrenal adenoma, <clears throat> it causes increased secretion of A for aldosterone. So there is excess of aldosterone in this patient. It leads to increase sodium and water reabsorption <clears throat> from the tubules. As you know, aldosterone is the one which primarily absorbs sodium and water from the DCT and the collecting tubule. It lead to increase intravascular volume and that lead to reduce R for renin, A for aldosterone. So in primary, aldosterone level is high and the renin level is reduced. Now what happened in secondary? Just to remind you, secondary occur in CHF, nephrotic syndrome and cirrhosis of liver. Now what happened? In this, as the fluid leaks out of the vasculature, intravasculature, the entire fluid, most of the fluid has gone to extravascular space. So here, intravascular volume is reduced, that lead to increase aldosterone and that lead to increase renin level. Point to be noted, in both the condition, renin, uh, aldosterone level is increased, primary and secondary, but in, sec in primary, renin level is reduced, but in, in secondary, renin level is increased. So now let us see, what are the uh, clinical features of Cone syndrome. So before I discuss the clinical feature, let's learn the basic concept. The clinical feature. So here is the nephron. Okay. We have A for aldosterone and it acts primarily on the collecting tubule and the DCT. What it does normally, it absorbs two sodium and water is also absorbed passively. 
तो सोडियम एंड वाटर आर एब्जॉर्ब एट द कलेक्टिंग टिप्यूल एंड डेसिटी सो इन ए नॉर्मल पर्सन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट बेसिक कंसेप्ट टू पॉजिटिव पार्टिकल हैव बीन एब्जॉर्ब सो एज पर लॉ ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोस्टेट बॉडी हैज टू एक्सक्रीट टू पॉजिटिव पार्टिकल सो वन एच आई एंड वन पोटेशियम विल गो आउट दिस इज नॉर्मल टू पॉजिटिव हैव कम इन एंड टू पॉजिटिव हैज टू गो आउट नाउ एज यू नो इन कोन सिंड्रोम विच इज ए ट्यूमर ऑफ जोना जोना ग्लोमरलोजा विच इज द आउटर मोस्ट लेयर ऑफ द एडल कॉटेक्स विच प्राइमरी सिक्रीट एल्डोस्टेरॉन सो ट्यूमर ऑफ जोना ग्लोमरलोजा एक्सेस एल्डोस्टेरॉन सो इन दैट केस here patient will be absorbing excess of sodium that means normally suppose we presume two sodium are being absorbed here four sodium are absorbed being absorbed with water okay so excess sodium and excess water coming in so what we get is increase intravascular volume this what i told you what is the basic problem and that lead to clinically it lead to what hypertension so hypertension is the clinical feature that we happen in these patients now what else will be there excess sodium come in <clears throat> now body has to excrete double h ion and double potassium so double potassium goes out that lead to what hypo kalemia hypokalemia that's the reason why hypokalemia occurs in cohn syndrome excess of h ion is also going out that lead to metabolic alkalosis okay now because of hypokalemia the patient are prone to muscle weakness due to same reason patient are prone to arrhythmias and patient is prone to polyuria now the point is why polyuria this you have to understand because of low potassium level the tubules become resist resistant to action of adh all of us all of you know adh primarily act on the collecting tubule and it only it absorb water adh has no role in that in the sodium reabsorption so sodium will not be reabsorbed because tubules are resistant to action of adh what we call as patient develop nephrogenic diabetes insipidus and for nephrogenic diabetes insipidus so water is lost and that lead to polyuria and sodium is being reabsorbed with water and water going out net result is only sodium stays in the body that lead to hypertension and as the water is going out that's why there is no edema no edema so despite excess sodium there is no edema in this patient right So these are the clinical feature that what we get in case of a uh, Cohn syndrome. Now we talk about how to diagnose a case of Cohn syndrome diagnosis. As far as diagnosis is concerned, the best initial test. is you check plasma 
एल्डोस्टेरॉन कंसंट्रेशन प्लाज्मा एल्डोस्टेरॉन कंसंट्रेशन एंड रेशियो ऑफ प्लाज्मा रेनिन एक्टिविटी रिमेंबर इन प्राइमरी वी डिस्कस जस्ट नाउ द एल्डोस्टेरॉन लेवल इज इंक्रीज बट रेनिन एक्टिविटी इज रिड्यूस तो वी गो फॉर द रेशियो एंड इफ दिस रेशियो इज ट्वेंटी इज टू वन more than 20 is to 1 it is a highly suggestive of cone syndrome okay so this is best initial test now we talk about what is the most confirmatory test most for that we do sodium chloride challenge test okay to so we give a challenge of salt it is done in the morning patient will come uh, in the morning and his serum sample is taken and we check serum level of aldosterone a for aldosterone after that we give patient to take salt we can give oral salt or we can give intravenous salt then after sometime you check the level of aldosterone in normal person after sodium chloride the aldosterone level falls but if it does not fall this is the most confirmatory test or the most accurate test to diagnose cone syndrome okay so now we confirm the patient has cone syndrome now We, as we, I told you, usually it is unilateral adenoma or it is a bilateral adrenal hyperplasia. Now we have to locate. We have to locate where is the problem. For that we do either CT abdomen or we do MRI. This is essential to locate. Why it is so essential? Because final treatment is surgery, but before surgery. Let's see. Patient has come with hypertension. So, what is the medical therapy we give? So, treatment include treatment include spironolactone. All of you know it is the aldosterone antagonist, but a new drug has come up, aplirinone. this question will surely come to you this year in your entrance exam or in your and in your file in your medicine exam if you talk examiner will be too happy it is just like spironolactone it is also a potassium sparing diuretic but the advantage is it does not lead to gynecomasia so uh, no breast enlargement about from aplirinone right now what is the dd what is the dd of cone syndrome the cone syndrome the dd is licorice ingestion licorice ingestion licorice when the patient take licorice it produce symptom exactly like cone syndrome that's why this is also known as pseudo hyperaldosteronism okay now let's see what is the difference uh, between the primary and secondary again before i discuss remember main ultimate treatment of adrenal adenoma or hyperplasia is surgery okay ultimate treatment is surgery but as of now let's uh, see what is the difference in primary and secondary hyperaldosteronism primary and secondary primary secondary hypertension in primary yes 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 
may or may not be there. Edema. Feet. No. Yes, yes, yes. Polyuria. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, no. Then arrhythmias. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, no. Then hypokalemia. Hypokalemia. It is profound hypokalemia. It is just a mild hypokalemia right but one thing I like to say in secondary hyper aldosterone in all the condition severe edema occurs marked marked edema occurs in this patient now a simple homework for all of you you reply this question on messenger the question is, in all the secondary hyperaldosteronism, edema, pro, profound hyper, okay, profound edema feet occurs, but there are two exceptions. What are the two exceptions where we get secondary hyperaldosteronism, but there is no edema feet? So you can, mail, you can send the question to me on, on Messenger. And one more thing, if you want uh, to read or study any other topic, you kindly send me by messenger. I'll be too happy to include your topics. Right. So now you today you have a homework also. And one more thing, those who are joining us on via messenger and so we are also planned to send them questions